This video was sponsored by Manscaped. I love their product, the Lawnmower 3.0. I made a whole video about it on my second personal YouTube channel, Zach Schaumler. I recommend them. Go to manscaped.com, use promo code CLNS20, CLNS20, for 20% off of your purchases. There are 12 college quarterbacks that I cannot wait to watch next season. And I want to run down the list, but we'll start with Trevor Lawrence, the quarterback at Clemson, because some people call this guy the next Andrew Luck. I am not sold on that. It's very clear when you watch Trevor Lawrence play football, it's clear and obvious he's definitely an NFL quarterback. But everyone saw him beat Alabama his freshman year in the national championship. And after that moment, he was immediately anointed the best quarterback prospect in years. And there was this assumption he was going to keep getting better and better and better. And I, I honestly asked the question, has he really gotten better? I felt like at times he took a step backward when it came to decision making last year. And I was kind of, it was kind of weird. Trevor Lawrence went undefeated, went to the national championship. He did lose to LSU. But I, I really don't feel like Trevor Lawrence took a big step forward last year. That's kind of weird. I know that makes a lot of people upset because there's such a, an assumption. He's this incredible Andrew Luck style quarterback, and he's definitely an NFL quarterback. But I'm really excited to watch Trevor Lawrence keep getting better and develop as an NFL quarterback in the next year, maybe two years if he stays in college beyond that. His arm strength, his accuracy, but his decision making, again, seemed to take a step backwards last year. And he needs to improve if he's going to be considered, in my book, the best quarterback in the last 15 or 20 years. I want to see a little bit more from Trevor Lawrence. Can't wait to watch him. Now, number two, the quarterback, the second quarterback I can't wait to watch is another guy that has been really, really massively hyped up. It's Justin Fields at Ohio State. He definitely has NFL potential, but he's also got some issues with ball location, with timing. There are little things about Justin Fields' game when it comes to the ability to throw the football he needs to clean up. He's an incredible athlete. I love the way he moves. He's actually, I want to give him credit where credit is due. I even made a video saying Justin Fields isn't quite ready. And I don't think that's really an outrageous statement to say that Justin Fields is not ready to be an NFL quarterback. He's not. He's played one year as a starting quarterback, a full year in college football. So saying he needs to clean things up is not a crazy mistake, a crazy thing to say. But I will say he made good decisions last year. The big problem with him was his erratic ball placement. He'd have guys wide open, and he'd throw the ball a little bit behind someone so no one would notice that it was bad ball placement. But that happened all the time with a, a guy throwing to people wide open, not hitting them perfectly in stride. And then he really did not show an ability to beat tight man coverage consistently without help from his receivers. So I just want to see a little bit more growth for Justin Fields as an NFL-type quarterback. Um, I, people fall in love with his stat line. They fall in love with the fact that he won a bunch of games last year, and his highlights are phenomenal. But I encourage people, go watch the negative plays from Justin Fields. Don't ignore them because they do matter. And people so often just watch highlights rather than watching a full game or all the film to get a full view of what a player looks like, not just the one game or the one season of good plays rather than the bad plays. I got a lot to keep watching from Justin Fields. Now, number three. The quarterback I can't wait to watch, the third quarterback I can't wait to watch, is Jamie Newman. He transferred from Wake Forest to Georgia. And this was a massive, massive move in college football. He makes Georgia a threat to win the SEC. I think he's a more... I, look, I loved Jake Fromm, the quarterback last year at Georgia. Jake Fromm had a limited ceiling. Jamie Newman does not. Jamie Newman is a much better athlete. He's got a bigger arm. He's capable of more, and I really can't wait to watch him play at Georgia. Um, he's a great college quarterback right now. I'm curious if he's going to become an NFL quarterback. We saw some good throws at Wake Forest, but he had a lot of jump balls, and the reality was that the talent around him at Wake Forest really didn't do him a lot of favors. And so he's on my radar now. Jamie Newman's a guy I can't wait to evaluate next year, and I cannot wait to watch him play at Georgia. Number one, with great talent around him. But number two, he's going to play against SEC-level defenses. That's going to be a big move for him. And the transfer is good for him, not only as a quarterback, he's going to develop and get better coaching and play with better players and improve as a quarterback by playing against SEC defenses. But he's also going to have an opportunity to prove himself to NFL scouts and really raise 
his value in the NFL draft. Jamie Newman's a guy to keep your eye on. There hasn't been a lot of talk about him. Him moving to Georgia was a massive deal, and I just think it's getting a little bit overlooked, and it really shouldn't be. Jamie Newman to Georgia is a huge, huge move. Number four, it's a quarterback I've talked about a lot, Trey Lance, the quarterback at North Dakota State. He's tough to evaluate because Trey Lance is so dominant. He plays at the D1 AA level, and at a school that's even more dominant than Alabama or LSU was last year. Here's the headline, though. And it's not, it's not misleading. Trey Lance had zero interceptions last year as a freshman during a 16-game national championship winning season. And the reason why he had zero interceptions was because he's a phenomenal decision maker. He is a head and shoulders better than every other person on the football field. When Trey Lance gets on the field, there's nobody else around him that's as good. He's that much better, exponentially better than everyone else. And it's kind of astounding to me. He might be a first-round quarterback. I cannot wait to watch Trey Lance next year, his continued growth as a quarterback. He's entering his redshirt sophomore year. He is eligible for the NFL draft after next year. I'd love to see him stay a little bit longer, keep developing. But the dude's got a great arm. He can run around. And I cannot wait to watch him develop next year at NDSU. Okay, number five, six, and seven are three quarterbacks who were all freshmen last year. Number five is Keaton Slovis at USC. He became the starter when JT Daniels got hurt. And as an 18-year-old true freshman starting quarterback at USC, he lit it up. I mean, the guy's got great timing. He, he had some freshman mistakes. I'm not going to say he didn't. Was, he, I mean, he wasn't perfect, right? He's got some issues. He had some interceptions and some wonky throws. A little bit of... I, I don't know. Here's the thing, though. The NFL potential you see in Keaton Slovis is his decision-making. Um, he's so good at not only moving within the pocket, moving around outside of the pocket, extending plays, but he's working from one to two all the way across the field to his third, fourth, even his fifth option occasionally. It's a massive deal. He's got a great arm. But arm strength is not the thing I'm most excited about. It's his ability and his habits as a quarterback. Again, going to his third, fourth, fifth option. The way he slides around in the pocket, very comfortable. With pressure all around him, pressure in his face. He's not phased by getting hit. He's not phased by by bodies being around him. That's a really impressive skill to have as a young quarterback. It's very rare. And I just can't wait to watch Keaton Slovis. I think he's going to play next year. Now, USC does have JT Daniels, another quarterback on their roster. He's in the transfer portal. He may or may not leave. It's kind of up in the air. But I, I, I would be very curious to see if JT Daniels leaves USC to avoid competing with Keaton Slovis, who really looked like an NFL quarterback last year as a freshman. His habits are great. He's got a great arm. And I think Keaton Slovis is a guy to watch next year at USC. Now, number six, we have Sam Howell at North Carolina. The dude is built like Baker Mayfield. He's a shorter, stocky dude with a cannon. Great ball location, a ton of back shoulder throws. His ability to throw the ball down the sidelines vertically might be the best in college football. I mean, he really is great at it. throwing the deep ball, throwing fades, throwing back shoulder, throwing comebacks. The dude has a rifle, and he's a really good decision maker. Again, very similar to Keaton Slovis at USC. He's a guy who can work to his third, his fourth option. He was a starter as a freshman last year at UNC, and I want to be very clear, please do not compare him to Mitchell Trubisky, another quarterback who went to UNC. It's not fair to Sam Howell. Sam is way more talented than Mitchell Trubisky is and ever was, and he plays for a completely different coaching staff. I hate this narrative. People are like, well, he's from the same college. That doesn't really mean anything. Maybe they stayed in the same geographic location, but they play for a different coaching staff, They're completely different quarterbacks with different skill sets. Sam Howell is a phenomenal quarterback. Don't compare him to Mitchell Trubisky. He's a great quarterback. I can't wait to watch him, and he is a future NFL quarterback. Continue to watch him next year at UNC. He's doing some special stuff. Now, number seven, we have Jaden Daniels at Arizona State, another freshman quarterback. This dude's talent is unbelievable. He's one of those guys, when you watch him play, you're like, oh, crap. That dude's different. He throws the ball different. And then you realize he's a freshman? Oh, what the heck? That's crazy. I loved watching the dude. He can run. He was really clutch in some big moments last year at Arizona State. Honestly, the one thing I would have to critique Jaden Daniels on is something off the field. I know some people at Arizona State 
Uh, my friends, they say that he's sort of quiet. He's a nice dude, a great guy. People love him. But I personally would love to see him develop more as a vocal presence in the ASU locker room. I want to see Jaden Daniels go from a, a quiet, timid freshman, which no one can blame him. As a freshman, you're there trying to earn your keep, trying to work hard, trying to gain everyone's respect. In year two now, as a sophomore, I want to see Jaden Daniels take a step forward as a leader, be more vocal, grab a hold of that locker room. And Jaden Daniels, if he does things like that, man, he is a special talent, and I really want to watch him. He's an NFL quarterback, but I just want to see him develop as a leader at Arizona State. Number eight is Brock Purdy at Iowa State. Going in, he's going to, into his junior year. Going into his junior year at Iowa State, he's a very scrappy guy. Uh, he's been well coached. He's got some NFL traits that I really, really like. His footwork in the pockets phenomenal. He's able to extend plays. He regularly throws to his third and fourth reads, and he's good at working through progressions. He's got a touchdown against Kansas. A touchdown from Brock Purdy, Iowa State against Kansas. Oh my gosh, it was like a laser beam over the middle. And I just thought that was the ball on film where I went, oh, he's different a little bit. And from then on, I started watching more and more and went, yep, uh, it's pretty clear that Brock Purdy has some level of NFL ability. I don't know if he's a franchise quarterback yet. I don't know if he's a backup. Maybe he's a guy like, uh, maybe he's a middle ground guy. Maybe he's Case Keenum. I don't know. But Brock Purdy has some kind of NFL talent. He's going to get a shot somewhere at some point. And I want to keep my eyes on him and see how he develops. Now, number 9, 10, and 11 are three guys who were not starters last year in college football. Number 9 is Spencer Rattler at Oklahoma. Now, he's going to put up huge numbers. He's an Oklahoma quarterback. He can run. He's got a cannon. He's got a great arm, really accurate. Really, I, I, This is a weird saying, but a live arm. When you watch Spencer Rattler throw the ball, you go, oh, that looks different. It jumps off his hand. You're like, that's a, that's a kid with a cannon. Um, he's going to be a sophomore next year. It will be his first year starting in college football. He sat behind Jalen Hurts last year, came off the bench a little bit, played occasionally. Spencer Rattler is going to shred college football. Pretty much any Oklahoma quarterback at this point, I'm convinced, would do that. But when you have a guy like Spencer Rattler with his talent level, his ability, oh, and you're pairing him with Lincoln Riley and the weapons they have at Oklahoma, something's going to happen. He's going to explode I think it's going to be really fun to watch, and I'm curious, how does he develop as an NFL quarterback? I, I think he's the next guy in the lineage of Oklahoma quarterbacks. Baker Mayfield, Jalen Hurts, Kyler Murray, Landry Jones is back there, but less re relevant now. Spencer Rattler's the next guy out of Oklahoma that you're going to go, oh yeah, maybe a Heisman candidate, going to put up a lot of numbers, going to be an NFL quarterback at some point. Keep your eye on Spencer Rattler at Oklahoma. Now, number 10 is Talia Tagovailoa. Tagovailoa. Jeez, I always do this. I hate. I read the notes and I don't say it. His name is Talia Tagovailoa. I am so sorry to people who are, uh, especially Polynesians, I know I mispronounced that name at first. I apologize. Uh, he's the brother of Tua Tagovailoa. He transferred from Alabama to Maryland. I assume that he left Alabama so he had a chance to get on the field and become the starting quarterback at Maryland. Um, and I'll be honest, this is the first time I will have paid attention to Maryland football in years. I've never cared. Like, Maryland has interesting uniforms. But other than that, are they really relevant to watch? Not really. Talia Tungavaloa makes them interesting. He's, got, he's the brother of the top five, the number five overall pick in the NFL draft, a quarterback at Miami with the Dolphins. And being the younger brother of a really successful person in the same field as you can be very tough. But I cannot wait to watch Talia Tungavaloa. I hope he's the starter because if he is, he'll give me a reason to watch Maryland football for the first time in years. Number 11 is a guy named Real Mitchell. I've talked to him a couple times behind the scenes. He's a great dude. I really like him. Uh, really, really friendly. Really just a, a nice human being. And he transferred from Iowa State behind Brock Purdy, transferred to Temple. I watched this film from 2019. I got access to watch his practices even. And it's really interesting to watch how Real Mitchell's developed a lot as a quarterback behind the scenes, you know, behind closed doors at practice last year at Iowa State. He's a much better quarterback than he was at the beginning of the year than he was last year at the end of the year. Um, I guess what I'm, my point is he developed and got better. I hope I said, I probably said that backwards. Um, but Temple's got a quarterback, Anthony Russo. I don't know that Real Mitchell's going to be the starter day one. Uh, he might not start at all next year, but he's going to get into the program at Temple. 
going to get to work. And I really think that Real Mitchell's a guy to watch. He's got some NFL ability. And with the progress he made last year behind closed doors, he's a guy worth paying attention to. He might not play a lot next year, but put him on your radar. Keep him in your mind because at some point, Real Mitchell, in my opinion, is going to do something worth watching. I'm really excited to watch him. Uh, I'm a fan of him as a person as well. He's a very nice, kind dude. And uh, I think he's got some NFL potential that's untapped. And he just kind of got unfortunate. You know, I feel kind of bad for him. This is a, I don't want to say, maybe not, maybe, I don't want to hurt his feelings. I don't want to be inappropriate. But he got stuck behind DJ Ugalele. He's now at Clemson. He's, he was, I, believe, I believe DJ was the number one quarterback in the nation. He played with on the same team as him in high school. And then in college, he played behind Brock Purdy. That's in the career of Real Mitchell. He's played behind two different top high-level NFL quarterbacks. I think Real needs a chance to shine on his own. I can't wait to watch that. And if he gets an ability to play and gets a chance to play, I think Real Mitchell could do some interesting special stuff. I know number 12, uh, my number 12 quarterback. I try to look at things from an NFL perspective. And the fun for me with college football is seeing guys develop into NFL quarterbacks. You know, a lot of guys are good college quarterbacks. Luke Falk is a great example of a guy who was great in college, but I never really saw an ability as an NFL quarterback. He was putting up big numbers, but big numbers and a lot of success in college does not necessarily mean NFL success. Now, one guy I am really fascinated, just kind of interested in, because I want to see whether or not this guy develops into an NFL quarterback. It's Sam Ellinger, the quarterback at Texas. When he first became the starter at Texas, I kind of wrote him off because he played a lot like Tim Tebow, a big quarterback who runs people over and a great leader. I, I like everything about Sam, but the hard thing for me was his playing style was not really resembling an NFL quarterback. But as time has gone on, if you watch the film on Sam Ellinger, if you remove your bias, you remove your first impression, he's getting better and better and better as a passer. Sam Ellinger at Texas is, you know, his highlight reel is great, but it's the little things he does. You go, oh, you know what? That's an NFL throw. The throw down the sideline. You're like, oh. Or he's going from his first, second to then his third and fourth option, throwing a backside comeback. Or looking off a of safety and throwing to the right. There's little things Sam Ellinger has been doing quietly behind the scenes. People in Texas know this, but Sam Ellinger's going from a good college quarterback to a guy who might be actually a good NFL quarterback. There's a big gap there and a big difference. And I'm really curious if Sam continues to develop as a passer because he has NFL potential. Kind of, this really reminds me of Jalen Hurts. You watch Jalen Hurts a couple of years ago at Alabama, you go, nope, he's not an NFL quarterback. But by the time a couple of years later, Jalen Hurts was leaving Oklahoma, you went, wow, he's taken a massive step forward and really changed his body of work and changed his ability as a quarterback. Sam Ellinger is similar at Texas. Keep your eye on him. He's got a shot to play in the NFL. And I, I don't know if he's a franchise quarterback. I don't know what. But I want to watch him next year and watch how he develops. Now, I said 12. I'm going to throw in a 13th because it's my show. I can do whatever I want. Um, there's a quarterback at UCLA. I keep, every year I keep trying to watch. I keep saying, is this the year that Dorian Thompson Robinson is going to finally show an NFL glimpse or an NFL Ability because the ability's there. A couple of years ago, I watched Washington State versus UCLA, where Dorian Thompson Robinson went on a tear. He, I think, he scored like sixty-four points, and you went, "Who is this kid? Who is DTR? This kid's incredible." And then it just never came. After that, it was that like he was like a one-hit wonder. I was like, "Where is the rest of the success? Why isn't this a continued habitual thing?" I don't know what's going on with Dorian Thompson Robinson. But I'm going to still keep my eye on him. I, I feel like I've been misled in the past by him, and he gives me a glimmer of hope. I go, oh, maybe this is the time. And then he doesn't do anything with it. But I just encourage you, keep your eye on Dorian Thompson Robinson at UCLA. He'll be a junior, his third year of eligibility, I believe. Because he's 2018, 2019, yeah, 20, that's his third year of eligibility. And I just think that there, there's something there. He's playing with Chip Kelly, a, clearly an offensive genius, and the arm talent, the ability to run around, I, DTR has too many traits that I go, he's just so talented. Can he put it together? I don't know, but I can't wait to watch him. And actually, now that I'm talking about it, there's one more guy 
Uh, Derek King transferred from Houston to Miami. Keep your eye on Derek King. So there you go. Those are the 14, I guess. I didn't in, uh, intend to have 14, but number one was Trevor Lawrence. Number two, Justin Fields. Number three, Jamie Newman. Number four, Trey Lance. Number five was, oh my gosh, Keaton Slovis. Number six, Sam Howell. Number seven, Jaden Daniels. Number eight was, oh my gosh, Spencer Rattler. Nope, who was it? Number eight. I'm, I'm so number eight. Ah, it's Brock Purdy. Number nine, Spencer Rattler at Oklahoma. Number 10, Talia Tungavaloa at Maryland. Number 11, Real Mitchell at Temple. Number 12, Sam Ellinger at Texas. Number 13, not scripted, not on my notes. Dorian Thompson Robinson at UCLA. And number 14, De'Eric King, the quarterback of Miami, transferred from Houston, took a year off to play and redshirting it better. I am curious about those 14 quarterbacks. They have all of them NFL potential. They're not all the same class. Some of them are NFL quarterbacks two years from now. Some of them are next year. Some of them are three years from now. But keep your eye on those 14 guys. Those are the 14 quarterbacks I believe that are worth watching that have NFL potential in college football. I'm curious if a name or two that I haven't mentioned will emerge. I don't. You can't predict what freshman's going to go off and have a great year. But right now, those are the 14 quarterbacks I have seen so far that all have NFL potential and an opportunity to develop into NFL quarterbacks playing on Sundays. Those are the 14 to watch. Man, that was fun.